Imagine a scene where men, women, and children find themselves helplessly swaying and twirling, caught in an uncontrollable frenzy. Day after day, the streets fill with dancers, their bodies drenched in sweat, their movements erratic and trance-like. The dance becomes an obsession, consuming their every waking moment. They refuse to eat, drink water, or sleep, dancing until they collapse, only to wake up again to continue their dancing frenzy. Though this scenario is unimaginable to many, it happened. Welcome to Tales of Time with your host, Jalen. In this season of the show named Hysteria's History, we will be diving into various cases of hysteria. In today's episode named Dance Till You Drop, we will be diving into the exact scenario previously described, better known as the Dancing Plague of 1518. Now what exactly went down in Strasbourg? It's 1518. We are in the city of Strasbourg, located in present-day France. The strange phenomenon described above began in July of 1518, when a woman named Frau Toffia started dancing in the streets of Strasbourg. She danced for days on end without eating, drinking, or sleeping. She eventually collapses, but once rested, continues to dance. Soon, more people joined in, seemingly unable to stop themselves. Within a week, Around 400 individuals were affected by the bizarre compulsion to dance. Considering Strasbourg's mere population of 20,000, one of every 50 residents were consumed by the dancing epidemic. The dancing was described as frenzied and involuntary, with people reportedly dancing until they collapsed from exhaustion or suffered injuries. Witnesses described the dancers as being in a state of distress, some even crying out for help as they desperately danced. It is said that some dancers died from heart attacks, strokes, or sheer exhaustion. At the peak, records state that over 15 dancers died per day. Concerned by the situation, civic authorities initially believed that the dancing was a result of supernatural causes or demonic possession. As a response, they organized public dissays of mass dancing, hoping that the dancers would be able to dance out their frenzied energy. This only made the epidemic worse, and it's only then that the plague reached its peak. They also sought medical help, inviting physicians and healers to determine the cause of the epidemic. In response to the epidemic reaching its peak, the leaders banned dancing and music in public, and the remaining dancers were taken to a shrine of St. Vitus, where they were given red heels and danced. After that, cases stalled and the mania came to a close. Why did everyone just start dancing? Though it is unclear, we have a few causes and theories. The social and religious climate of the time may have played a role in the dancing plague. A lot of people near the Rhine River believed in the curse of St. Vitus, which says that St. Vitus would force sinners to dance. People dwelled on their own sins and thought that they might be next, so they were. There were a lot of problems at the time such as new diseases, harvest problems, skyrocketing wheat prices, and social and religious conflicts. Local records record 1517 as being a bad year. In the summer of 1518, hospitals, shelters, orphanages started overflowing, setting the stage for the dancing. One prevailing theory suggests that the dancing plague was a case of mass psychogenic illness or mass hysteria. Mass hysteria is a phenomenon in which a group of people experiences similar physical or psychological symptoms with no identifiable medical cause. The theory suggests that the dancers were caught in a collective delusion, possibly triggered by stress, fear, or religious fervor, leading them to engage in compulsive dancing. 
Another theory proposes that the dancing plague was caused by ergotism, a condition resulting from the ingestion of ergot contaminated grain. Ergot is a fungus that can grow on rye and other cereal crops, and it produces alkaloids with hallucinogenic properties. Ingesting ergot contaminated grain can lead to various symptoms, including muscle spasms, hallucinations, and a sensation of burning. It is possible that the dancers consumed bread or other food products made from contaminated grain, which could have triggered their uncontrollable movements. St. Vitus's dance, also known as Sidenum's chorea, is a neurological disorder characterized by involuntary movements and muscle spasms. Some researchers have suggested that the dancing plague was a localized outbreak of this condition. However, St. Vitus's dance typically affects individuals, whereas the dancing plague involved a large number of people simultaneously, making this theory less likely. But what did we learn, and why is this relevant today? The impacts felt today are primarily those of historical interest and academic study. The Dancing Mania of 1518 offers a unique glimpse into the social, cultural, and psychological aspects of medieval Europe. It serves as a reminder of the influence of mass hysteria and collective behavior on societies in the past. Historians and psychologists have analyzed the event to gain insights into social and psychological dynamics that could have contributed to the phenomenon. The dancing mania has been of interest to medical professionals and psychologists as it presents a rare case of mass psychogenic illness. It has been studied as an example of mass hysteria or a psychological contagion, where psychological factors lead to physical symptoms and collective behavior. The incident contributes to our understanding of psychosomatic disorders and the influence of social and cultural factors on health. While the dancing mania of 1518 is not widely known among the general public, it occasionally captures attention through media coverage or as a topic in documentaries and educational materials. Such exposure helps increase awareness of historical events that shed light on the complexities of human behavior. Now what happened in Strasbourg that made it so memorable? The dancing lasted for days and even weeks, leading to extreme physical exhaustion, dehydration, and in some cases, death. Reports suggest that around 15 people died a day from heart attacks, strokes, and exhaustion during the height of the epidemic. A total of over 100 died from the whole epidemic. The dancing plague caused significant social disruption in Strasbourg. The affected individuals abandoned their daily activities and responsibilities to dance in the streets often neglecting their families and work. This disruption had economic consequences for the town. The dancing frenzy quickly spread to others in the region. It is estimated that hundreds of people were affected by the dancing plague, joining in the uncontrollable dance. Some individuals traveled to neighboring towns, spreading the phenomenon even further. The dancing plague had a profound psychological impact on the affected individuals and the community as a whole. Witnessing such a bizarre and uncontrollable behavior led to fear, confusion, and superstition. Some believed that the dancing plague was a punishment from God, while others suspected in supernatural causes or witchcraft. The Dancing Plague of 1518 serves as a reminder of the mysterious and complex nature of human behavior. 
It highlights how societal and psychological factors can converge to create extraordinary events that defy rational explanation. Although we may never fully understand the true cause of the dancing plague, it remains as a captivating historical enigma that continues to intrigue scholars and spark speculation to this day. The citations in past episodes of this podcast are available on our YouTube channel at Tales of Time Podcast, which you should subscribe to. Stay tuned for future episodes of Tales of Time, and don't forget about the admonishing tale that was the Dancing Plague of 1518. Bye-bye.